Hey, everyone. Ms. Terry's gone batty. If you only knew how close to the truth that was. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not even kidding. But anyway, we're all good. Um, Mr. Soaps and Such is not here with me today um, for, for talking anyway. He's here recording for me. Uh, we will get back to that as soon as we can. It is just a different setup. And we're dealing with a lot of different things since we moved. Um, I did put most of your instructions, really every important instruction is going to be up in the text. Um, if you want extras or little explanations of things, you might want to make sure you have your sound on, which, of course, you can't hear that if you don't have your sound on. Um, anyway, um, I will give a little bit of a little bit more chatter about what I'm doing and why sometimes. Um, I do talk a lot um, in the text about the importance of using rub rubbing alcohol for a variety of things. Uh, just happened to be a video I could kind of highlight it in because, you know, I just took the time to explain what it's for or why I'm doing doing something. Because sometimes in the videos you'll see me spritzing and spritzing and people ask, what are you spritzing and why? And I got to thinking, I, I usually say why f for a certain part of the video, but I use it all throughout. And there's very many reasons to use it and different, different um, uses for it. So anyway, I, I try to include that in here a lot. Um, but I wrote most of the instructions up there because uh, I wanted to also catch up and be able to um, reconnect with you all a little bit, let you know what, what has been going on in our lives. And we will do more on this later. I, I was going to do a, a deeply personal video and I'm going to wait on that. I will, um, as most of you know, I did uh, lose my father. He uh, passed away of cancer on September 11th and, uh, we uh, were he was here with us under hospice care at at his home and we are all my brother and my sister and I are all on this property together um, in different different ho housing of different uh, domiciles. Uh, there's the word I was looking for, um, but on the same piece of property. And so we're helping each other out uh, as best we can. Um but that's kind of where I've been, not only the move, which was not as far planned out as a normal move would be, partially because I found out my dad had terminal cancer. Um, so there, there was a lot, you know, when you, when you pack and you have time, you can really organize it quite well. And, um, you know, when you're in a hurry, things get thrown in boxes. And although I was pretty careful to not uh, allow things to break. I'm a pretty good rapper. Um, and not the musical rapper kind. I'm not that great at that. Um, but, uh, anyway, so we made it, we made it to Iowa. We, uh, you may have heard a little bit about that in my last video, although I don't know how much I said, I don't remember. And I didn't go back and listen to it before I recorded this, but we're in Iowa. We're safe. We are continuing to make videos, we are continuing to make soap, and we are, um, it's been slow getting back into making the videos because you have to have a place to record and a place to make the videos, a place to record the audio, and, and it's just been difficult as we're going along and unpacking at the same time and trying to find this. Where's my thermometer? I can't find it. Where's, the, you know... Oh my goodness, the things I'm still missing. Not even funny. But um, still moving forward, I had plans to do a bunch more of these style uh, soaps um, because they're fun. <laughs> they're fun to make. And I had so many ideas that I couldn't even choose from all of them. But I only ended up doing the spiders and the bats. And I'll t I talk a little bit more at the end about that. But I'll be moving on to some other things soon as um, I do, again, talk a little bit about that down the road. But I mean, it's 
almost, what's today, the 30th? Yeah, today's the 30th of October as I'm recording this voiceover. And, uh, you know, it's too late now. <laughs> um, but it's time to do Christmas coming up soon. So you will see some Christmas videos coming from me fairly soon. Um, I may have to slow down a little bit my number of videos that I do. Either that or I slow down doing the text that you see. Um, a lot of people prefer to have all of the information in text form. I don't know if that's so they don't have to listen to my stammering or the sound of my voice, or if it's because they want to watch the video while something else is going on and they don't want to have the sound going for that reason, or just they're more of a visual learner, uh, which I actually am as well. But uh, a lot of people do prefer the, the um, text directions up there. And uh, I, I don't mind doing them. They just take a lot longer. Um, it's, quite, um, it's quite a task to do that and to do the rest of the things I have to do in my life. So as it gets closer and closer to Christmas, I have less and less time. Um, because I am also, you know, working on selling some things that I do sell soaps and I do, uh, sell sugar scrubs and a variety of other things that I have been working to, uh, build up stock in. I actually, um, have been selling out of some of my scrubs fast enough to where I, I feel like I can't keep up. So I'm trying to make bigger batches and get more done at one time and um, anyway, that is slowing me way down with the soap videos. So I apologize for that. Um, I may go to once every other week for the season. I don't know. I, I might do a, a full length video one week and then maybe a short and back and forth that way. I don't know. I will try to put something out every week, even if it is at least just a short. Um, I don't like losing touch with you and I don't like, you know, not being able to, to help you get some ideas and maybe learn some new techniques for your Christmas season and your gift giving and whatever types of things you like to do as it, uh, as the holidays near, um, many of us make, make things for a variety of holidays and this is the season of many of them starting tomorrow and, um, going through, I mean, it's just the season it goes all the way through New Year's. So, um, it's, it's a lot to keep up with video wise. I will try my best. Um, last year on my first year with the video, I ended up not doing, uh, a lot of soap making because of the videos. I, it was, it's hard to do both. I know I'm making soap in the video, but I'm not making large batches of soap to sell. And one of the things I've found I'm really bad at is keeping up with my website at the same time as doing all of this. So I, it's a, you know, there's a big learning curve for me on this. I'm, I f still feel like I'm new at doing this, even though I kind of feel like I have my, my patter down, my, um, my basic steps of what I like to do in videos, that kind of stuff. But uh, keeping up with life <laughs> is, is not as easy. So I'll get better at it. And maybe I'll get better at talking with less ums. Maybe that'll happen someday, you think? Uh, one of the things I'd like to point out real quick here, I, do, I will talk through a little bit of the instructions here, is I don't even know if you can even see it. I do tell you that the soap is setting up, but I'm not sure you can actually see it. There was a kind of a seam there that I just covered over where it was starting to set up on one side. I got to it quick enough, so it didn't cause any harm. Uh, but you'll see as I try to swirl here, I have about, you know, two swirls. And see that little net looking, looks like, I don't know, film right there. That's it setting up. So... I'm kind of just pushing down, pushing it more into the wet soap than, than moving it around. There are 
there are fixable things to do with that. It, when I pour clear over it, generally, you're not going to see that. Um, if there's a lot of it, you might see some bubbles and that type of thing, maybe some little uh, strands of soap. You might see a little bit if you're not careful. Um, but uh, you can also remove that uh, film, but when you're doing such small layers as I'm doing there, these are very small, thin layers. I'd say at most, well, I'd say about a quarter, quarter of an inch, maybe less um, on this, on this first layer. Um, quarter of an inch is pretty, pretty fair to say after this. Um, and then the layer on top. Uh, the soap ends up being, I think, about an inch and a eighth or an eighth inch and a quarter. I don't remember because I didn't measure it. I'm just going by what I remember it looking like in my little head. Um, but, uh, you know, you can judge how thick you want your soap to be. But when you're pouring these layers and doing this particular technique, which, by the way, if I didn't mention it, and I don't think I did, this is a marbling technique. Um, not the first layer. That's just a swirl. You, you can get a really good swirl with just two colors, maybe three, um, in a really shallow slab mold like this. Um, if you pour thin layers and, um, and work that, that's with melt and pour. A lot of people want to replicate what cold process soap uh, makers do. And I see why there's some beautiful swirls that they get and they can accomplish that we can't quite make the same look. We can come close. Um, we can replicate it in different ways sometimes. And this is one of those ways. I could take that soap right there, the um, real thin layer, and I could have poured a layer of clear first and just let that set up and then do this on top of that. And then pour another layer of clear over that to protect it so it stays in the middle and you still see the design throughout the use of the soap. Um, that's That would be one way to create a swirl look without having, um, without doing something like the acorn technique without using a big loaf mold. Um, the swirls definitely work easier in shallow layers. But you'll see as, as the next layer comes up once I'm done scraping these bats, um, I'm going to be doing marbling and that is where uh, this is a technique I created and I'm calling it marbling for lack of a better term. Um, I think when I first started doing it way back when I made my nebula soap, I was calling it, um, wet, wet layering. I don't know. Uh, it just didn't work. Whatever, whatever I was <laughs> calling it didn't work. I'm calling it marbling because what I'm doing is I start You'll see in a minute here, um, after I'm through picking at little pieces of soap on the screen. Um, oh, real quick here, the tap where I'm pointing there. Can you see that jiggle a little bit like jello when you when you tap it? There is one way to know if your how how set up your soap is. It's just a little tap on it. Um, you can tap the top of it with like uh, one of your silicone spatulas or a rubber pencil eraser if anybody still has those I don't use pencils very often anymore which is sad but um, anyway just a tap can kind of tell you also how thick that skin is because that's what you want a really thick skin before you add another layer technically with these designs you can let the layer set up fully and I tend to prefer to do that if you if it gets cold, if you let it get completely like dried out and you leave it for a few days, that's a little different. That might be a little more complicated as far as um, adhering your next layer. Not impossible. Just remember the cooler it is, the more you're going to want to raise the temperature of the clear that you're pouring. You want it to be above melting point, um, which I barely achieve in this one. I am also on a speaking of learning curves, I said a little bit back there. Um, I'm, I'm on a learning curve for working in colder weather because I'm in colder weather. <laughs> um, this particular night when I was filming this, it was, it was getting chilly and the soap was setting up faster than I'm used to. 
So there's, there's going to be a lot of experimenting and playing around with different ideas. I do have some ideas for how to uh, counteract that a little bit. And I just haven't had the opportunity to film that yet. Um, but um, anyway, the marbling is what you're about to see here is where I pour a warm layer which it at 132 would have been fine 130 would have been fine anything above 132 might be a little bit too much um, especially if you're doing something where you're pouring a thick layer you don't want to pour that hot with uh, at least with um, crafters choice soap there is a lower melting point for crafters choice if you're using Stevenson's your melting point is much higher and you have to look at your own melting point to figure out um, where, where to start, where to gauge it. You want to be above your melting point. Um, and you can find that from the manufacturer. If you, if it's not written on the packaging that your soap base comes in, you want to contact the manufacturer. Um, the store, if you buy it in a store rather than online, you might, you might be better off just going to the manufacturer. They may not know, um, if it's not marked. Um, Anyway, uh, here we go, and you see, you see, I'm pushing on the low end of the soap because it was cooling off faster, and I, I hesitated. I almost put it back in the microwave, and then I thought, then I'm going to have to heat reheat the small colors, and that's really tricky to do. Anyway, so I went with it. You do, you see me sloshing it around a little bit. That's to make sure it's covered, and I do that immediately. And the reason I do it immediately when I pour it is I want the heat to be able to make that connection to the lower soap. That's what helps it adhere together. Yes, you can spritz it with alcohol. Um, I didn't take the time to do it because I thought my soap was cooling off too fast. Um, spritzing with alcohol is great for this, but you want to spritz lightly. You don't want to... Please take a look at your spritzers. Use a fine mist sprayer if you can, if you can find one. The ones that, that have such a heavy spray can prevent your layers from sticking, among other things, can uh, move soap when you don't want it to move. Right here, the marbling is me moving soap with clear, clear soap. And then, of course, a tool here and there. But mostly it's that movement of the, the clear soap over the colors. And you want to start with the clear. If you don't start with the clear, those little strands or those little neat designs I'm pouring in with the pinched cup. And I'm talking about those little tiny, they're 3.4 ounces, I think, little um, silicone cups with the with the little pour spout. Um, I got mine at Mad Micah's. Yes, I am affiliated with them and there will be a link. And if you purchase through that link, I will get a, a little um, kickback, but n at no cost to you. Um, it's just one of the ways you can show support for me. Um, they, uh, but I, I only <laughs> am going to affiliate with someone I really, really love their products. And I do love Mad Micah's products. Um, and these little silicone cups, you can get them other places for sure. But they're, they're neat because right at that little spout, if you pinch it off, you have much better control over how much comes out. And, um, and if you move it kind of quickly, you get that little stringy look that you saw when I first poured. Um, I got to take a second to say, I, I hope you can see the, I talk about it a little bit in the text later, but, um, the iridescence in those colors, even before I add one that I pointed out in the, the, um, the Luna and the Nebula are both, uh, really iridescent with, like iridescent purple in one, I think an iridescent aqua in the Luna, maybe. They're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. I don't think the camera picks it up um, as well as real life, <laughs> seeing it in real life. Um, this soap gets a really neat depth to it. That's one of the parts about this technique that I love. Um, you're marbling in a clear soap. You can see all the way down to the bottom layers. Um, and it's, if you're careful, <laughs> if you don't add too many layers and don't muck up the layers like I have in the past sometimes. Um, but again, my Nebula soap is a really good example. My Galaxy Adventure, not a Galaxy Adventure. 
Um, oh, I forget what I called that one. But there's another galaxy soap in there um, where I use the marbling technique. Um, and those uh, really, really show the clarity that you can get and the depth that you can achieve from using these layers. Yet another clear layer. And I do let these set up fairly well in between, um, if not all the way. I don't, like I said, I don't wait a day and let it get that cool. It's still kind of fresh soap. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what I mean here. See how I'm pinching that little layer? And I am adding my favorite color in the world, Blue Moon White. Um, it's a lot more Blue Moon than white, but it is white. It has a bit of cloudiness to it. It is very... Um, iridescent it's got it's like the blue flash that you see in um, labradorite is what it reminds me of I don't and and the more when you mit, blend it in with clear a little bit and you have a darker color behind it it really emphasizes that look um, I, I may do an entire video on that uh, later somewhere down the road but some of my some of my um, the, the what's the technique with the saran wrap my brain is shut down um the crushed velvet look in some of those I talk about it because you do need a dark color behind to really let um have those uh colors work for you the best that they can but I also want to maybe do a video just talking about um iridescent colors or or um any of them that have kind of a special effect to them, most of that, most of those are uh, easier to see against a darker background. Doesn't have to be black; it could be navy or really dark green or purple or whatever you want. But dark is better for those things showing up. Um, anyway, so this is my last little color I added. I only I went back and added a little bit of that purple because I thought too much of it got covered up from the underneath. I wanted to bring back a little bit of one of the darker colors to the top to give it some shadows and some contrast. And the look I'm going for, I think you see it more when I do my final turn of my of my soap. Yeah, stop yourself if it's got a film. Just don't do it. Or I, in a thicker soap, I just remove it. You know who you want to watch for that for removing the um, removing that film. Who is really good at that and at showing it on on camera is Samantha, um, the dancing soap dish. If you have not subscribed to her channel, you want to. She's a fabulous soap maker and has very innovative ideas. Um, great ideas on how to use things around your house to to make soap. Very good ideas just in general on how on on many soap techniques. She's fabulous, and she uh, she shows how to remove that little film as it starts to to set up. And she's she's a master at it. Um, I'm not so much. Uh, I can when I remember to sometimes I just panic and don't um, and of course in a design like this I feel like it doesn't matter and I also feel like because it's such a thin layer that you're risking just pulling up all the color and destroying the design um, but that's kind of unique to this soap um, most of the time I don't know I guess I do a lot of thin layers in general I like to work in that way but um with this particular soap, it it was a must. It, it, if you're going to do those kind of, the kind of marbling technique, you have to use small layers. Um, you'll find if you tried that in in a um, loaf soap or in something deeper like that, uh, it's just going to start blending all together. It's going to move too much. It's got too much wiggle room. You want something that's going to set up kind of quickly on you, and you do have to work quickly. Um, but it, it'll muddle too much and your the clear will not stay clear and the color will kind of the colors will muddy and come together a little too much. It's just not meant to be a soap with a lot of depth to it or that if you want to do a kind of swirl that does you want to look up acorn swirl. I have a couple of videos on that. There are um, a few others who do as well. Oh, my stupid elbow dance. This is just 
what happens when you happen to notice something looks weird on your screen and you think, oh my gosh, it looks like my elbow's dancing around. What am I even doing? And I pointed it out in one particular video where it happened a lot and I happened to notice it on here and I wondered who remembers that. I don't even remember what video it's in. But anyway, it got a chuckle out of some of you, I believe. Um, but it, it appeared again this last week. So um, here, we, here we go doing the second part of this technique. Because really the, the marble technique is its one thing. It's its, its own thing. It's, it's, it's the technique. Now I'm doing embeds over the marbling. I'm using the marbling for a background for another picture. And I could do, it could go really far and do an entire scene over that. But I just wanted some bats and like spiders like the, the, that I did a couple weeks ago. Um, I, the, the design that I did kind of try to keep my design all one way, even though I was turning the pan in different directions to level it. If you didn't catch that, and that's because my table isn't level. So, and we've got some other ways to deal with that down the road. But for right now, um, I just turn it every time I do a new layer and it ends up leveling out and you get a level soap in the end. Um, I wanted the, I don't know if you can see kind of, there's a hor horizontal kind of look to those swirls a little bit. I want the, wanted it to look like clouds, even though the bats are kind of flying in every direction and it, uh, you know, that it doesn't, it's not making its own picture. I wanted it to look like a sky and clouds, a purple sky. And I really feel like I achieved that, that whole little whoops. Oh my gosh. I don't even know how to begin to tell you about that one. That little bat soap that I just put in there that was in two halves and I made a hole. I guessed and was trying to line up that the cut of that bat right in the center. So I would cut through it again when I cut the soap because I cut too many bats. I was supposed to have a whole bat in the center there and I didn't. And that's why I scooted them. I was going to have two in the center and I just messed up. So anyway, I, uh, and the idea of, I think in a minute I talk about having more embeds than you need. I still needed one more bat embed. I was so mad at myself. I still love the way it came out, but there's one little corner or edge that I saw that I thought really needed a bat, one or two. Yeah, one at the right side and one at the top. And they're kind of a halfway a little toward the right. I could have used another little bat wing, part of a bat wing anyway. Um, I did have one that I didn't like where it touched, two bat wings touched. I didn't want any of them touching. It's just the look I was going for, kind of like I did with the spiders. But um, I love that I'm just being as critical as I can. So you can kind of see my thought process and what I wanted and what I didn't want. I was thrilled with the soap. I love the way it came out. I don't know how in the world I got that mat, um, to match, to match the grape ape neon purple. I, I mean, obviously I didn't get it to match it, but it perfectly went with it. Um, it almost looked like there was like the mat was on the bottom of the mold. It was weird. Anyway, here's my little, it's not just my tip. I, I saw it somewhere first. If you spray the edges, uh, pull out a little bit, um, it helps your soap to um, loosen from the mold. It is more important, I feel, in a loaf soap because those, are, those guys can be really hard to unmold sometimes. And just spritzing, pulling back the mold a little, making sure it's set up, and spritzing along the edge will help it loosen and help it come out a lot easier. And uh, here we go. And now, um, now I'm measuring. Oh boy, I I put in last time in the spiders. The sp arachnophobia is the name of the video. Last time in that video, I um, tried to look up the link for you for this mold, and it is no longer available, sadly. Um, it doesn't mean it won't be in the future. So keep looking. You just search five inch slab mold, search it on Amazon, search it in your Google search. Um, see what you come up with. Um, a lot of people are afraid to do searches, I think, because they ask things that they could easily search and they just don't. <laughs> um, 
but it isn't, this particular mold isn't available. So I'd say you're on your own, but I will put, if it's still available, I will put the six inch slab mold that I found. Um, the, obviously you can use a much larger one. I have one that's, I think 10 inches, maybe one that's 12. I've got, I've got some bigger ones that I also like to use. Um, but these small ones are so nice for making videos or for experimenting with, um, with new techniques, new designs, whatever. It's just, it's very handy. Um, and then you have four little soaps or four medium sized soaps or whatever. Um, if you cut it that way, there's other ways to cut it. If you had the six inch mold, I would suggest cutting it in a half and then then on the opposite way, I'd cut it in thirds and you'd end up with some little rectangle bars that would be really cute. Um, cause I think a full three inch square might be too much. I'm not sure. The two and a half squinch, ugh. the two and a half inch squares came out really nice. They're a nice size. I know at the end of this, I bring them up close to the camera and they look ginormous. They're not ginormous, but they're a good size soap. I think they weigh, I think they weighed about, um, 6.5 ounces each, something like that, the, the arachnophobia ones. And that's kind of what I based these on as far as measuring the amount of soap. That's why 27 ounces, I know it was a really weird, um, number, but I was kind of basing that off of what I, um, when I weighed the other soap, I kind of wanted to come close to that same so because I, I liked the way it came out, I liked the thickness that, that kind of matched the width of the soap. I don't, you know, if it were too thin, that square might be kind of weird. Um, but it's a nice, um, a little bit more than an inch and it's, it's a nice thickness for a soap bar like this. Um, like I said, they came out super cute. Oh yeah. My table, um, my table isn't flat. So that's part of why you're, you're seeing me having to turn the mold several times. It's not perfectly, um, balanced, right. And we'll get it. We'll get that figured out. Um, everything is new. Um, our equipment's the same, but it's in a new place and everything, the table isn't, um, the old one. It is a new, our old one was a piece of garbage. I wasn't willing to bring with me. It was a really old falling apart card table. Um, but so we have a new table a little bit longer, but I have to, adjust some things. Anyway, um, yeah, my vegetable peeler, by the way, just make sure that nobody thinks I'm actually using a peeler that I peeled vegetables with. This was brand new out of the package. Um, and you don't want to, you want to do the same. You want to get your own soap tools for soap and kitchen tools for kitchen for food. Um, you don't want to cross contaminate. It's real easy to do that. And it's just not smart. And these are cheap. You can buy them, you know, the Dollar Tree or Walmart or whatever. Um, yeah, I, I do have one that I love. That's my favorite. And I'm pretty sure it was a package of like three or something that I got at either Dollar Tree or Walmart's or something cheap like that. Um, but buy new, don't, don't use one that you just peeled potatoes with, please. Um, it's too easy to contaminate your soaps and have mold or bacteria floating around in, in there. And you might not see it just like with the botanicals. When you put botanicals in soap, um, you might not see it right away. Uh, you will eventually, <laughs> but, um, they will rehydrate and rot most of them, not all of them. There's, there's a good, pretty good list of some that, of some that will make it, but don't think you're adding lavender and rosebuds to a melt and pour soap and having it last for very long. And you are risking, um, allergies, mold and mildew type allergies for other people, even if it doesn't bother you. Um, besides it looks gross in the end. It really does. Once it starts decaying, it looks nasty and it is nasty. <laughs> so anyway, avoid, avoid, um, botanicals. I don't know. I, we, oh, I got there from the peeler. Oh, good grief. Anyway, here are these up close and personal. Um, I really rambled a lot today and that kind of happens when I, when I, um, put all the text up. So <laughs> forgive my rambling. Hopefully there was something useful in all of that. I'm not sure. 
Um, I do, one of the things I, I did think I, oh, I do, I did think I mentioned that, that one of the reasons I'm doing less videos is that I'm working on other products too. Um, so maybe someday I'll share what I do for my sugar scrubs, or at least the basic idea, the basic uh, recipe I used, I did get from somewhere else and it is a free recipe. And I will explain that more if I ever do a video on mine, but I won't give you the changes I made to it because it's all personal stuff. Not, not, you know, not personal, but it's choice. It's your choice. What do you like in, in your, um, in your sugar scrubs or in your whipped soap, that kind of things that kind of thing. So, um, I won't share my exact formula with you cause it isn't, first of all, I'll, I'll just show the starting point and I will tell you the kinds of things that are easy to replace to make it a little bit more your own. Um, if I do that, I probably will cause I'm doing so many sugar scrubs lately. Um, so I probably will share that with you in the long run. Um, I've just been kind of holding that one near and dear to my heart because I love the way mine came out. But um, please, as I'm asking you up there, if you used the marbling technique and put little embeds over it and um, let me know what you'd do. Um, it's, you could use it as a background. It really works nicely for a background for a sky or space or um, something like that. Or if you just want an abstract background, because this could just be an abstract background like my arachnophobia was just abstract. I just wanted to get Halloween colors in there and not have it turn brown. Um, so, um, yeah, let me know. Let me know what kinds of things you'd put in your soap, um, over top of the marbling. Um, Ooh, I hope you don't hear the thunder coming through. There's rain and thunder. If you do, sorry. <laughs> if you got this far, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, Mr. Soaps and such will be hanging out sometime soon when we get everything settled and, and our equipment, uh, set up properly. But, um, I hope you enjoyed the soap and the technique. And if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Um, just ask in the comment section and I do try to answer them all. Thanks for your time. I hope you have a great day. Thanks. Bye.